ASU is like, all right, you know Java, we forgot to teach you all this other stuff. So real quick, here's C, here's C++, uh, here's Lisp, and here's Prolog. Hey everyone, I'm a second semester junior at Arizona State University studying computer science. And I thought it'd be interesting to show you my degree so far, all the classes I've taken and my experience studying computer science. My freshman year, first semester. The first class you take in your freshman year is Principles of Programming, CSC 110, and this is essentially Java 101. I think you actually have the option to test out of the class, which I kind of wish I did. This is very much just making sure that everyone is on the same page. And I had to take pre-calculus, so actually most freshmen would take Calc 1. Um, I'm pretty sure I graduated high school with remedial math, so I didn't even test into Calc 1. So I actually had to take pre-calculus, and then after that I was able to go on to Calc ASU 101, the ASU experience. I think most universities now have a class like this, and it's basically like a, hey, you're not in high school anymore. Um, you know, you're on your own, you have to kind of take life a bit more serious, and also your final project is to go to the career fair so you know where the career fair is your junior year. Then you have English 101 or 107, and that's dependent on whether or not English is your uh, native language. I got a five on my AP English language exam, and they wouldn't let me test out of it, so that's cool. Introduction to Engineering. This is actually a pretty cool class. This is the first kind of engineering-based class in the major that makes you feel like an engineer. It introduces you to like different design processes that engineers go through, um, different project management stuff, as well as the final project, you're actually working with a team to uh, build a Lego car that's able to traverse a maze uh, using a bunch of sensors that you program in MATLAB. Then I had to take a social behavior sciences elective. In high school, I took AP micro and macro as like a combined course, so I did both those AP exams. So I got credit for Econ 211 um, for that, which is quite nice. My freshman year, second semester, CSC 205, Object Oriented Programming and Data Structures. This is basically Java 102. It makes sure that you understand abstraction, um, inheritance, all that good stuff. And it also introduces stacks and queues, which are two very useful data structures. And it's kind of lays the base foundation of data structures and algorithms, which is like the class that every technical interview goes through. And then I had to do English 102. So same thing again, it's cool that you'll see down here, I got credit for 214 because of my AP exams but I still had to do 102, so that's cool. My professor went on maternity leave halfway through the semester, so it, I think I had the class for a month and then it was just like an A. So I'm getting a bachelor's of science in computer science. Part of that is I am in the engineering school at ASU. So because of that, I have a lab science requirement where I need to take 12 credits of sciences, um, eight credits of one discipline and four credits of another choices were physics, bio, chemistry, and geology. I remembered my chem class in high school and I don't want to do that. I didn't have the math requirement for physics, so it was biology and geology. I figure eight credits of geology is a lot easier than eight credits of biology, so I did eight of geology and four bio. Uh, sophomore year, first semester, CSC 120, Digital Design Fundamentals. This guy, this is like an, you know, an introduction to circuits, introduction to binary arithmetic. It kind of gives you a taste of like low level stuff. Um, we had a lab, and it's actually the reason why I'm super into Arduinos and Raspberry Pis now. It also just kind of convinced me that electricity is magic and uh, that computers are rocks that we tricked into thinking. Math 243, Discrete Mathematical Structures. So this class, um, oh, so this is what I wrote for me of what this class was. Discrete math, unlike calculus, which is all up in your face, discrete math is much more quiet. Um, I took this class as a condensed online course and it nearly killed me. I also was doing it at the same time as doing Calc 2 as a condensed online course. So in like a period of eight weeks, I got the entire class worth of discrete math and Calc 2 done along with all my other classes. And I do not recommend anyone do that ever. 66 I already talked about it, Calc 2. Uh, this was probably the hardest class I've ever taken. Um, I passed by 1% and I'm happy to say that I'm done with calculus now. I had to do a humanities, arts, and design elective, but I did religion 321. It was the only upper division elective that would let a sophomore take it. And by doing that, I kind of fulfilled another requirement where I just needed a general um, upper elective. So the second semester of my sophomore year, I had computer organization and assembly language programming. Uh, this was very low level, um, how computers work, more in depth binary arithmetic. So like floating point, memory organization, how like how caches work, things like that. This class was super useful from a assembly language point of view. Like it's basically you have assembly language and everything builds up from there. 
most software engineers nowadays are less concerned about hardware constraints. Introduction to Programming Languages, CSC 240. So, so far, you had Java, and ASU is like, all right, you know Java, we forgot to teach you all this other stuff, so real quick, here's C, here's C++, uh, here's Lisp, and here's Prolog. Um, and we learned all those things in one semester. Then, Calculus 3, except I didn't need to take this class because there was another class on offer called Logic and Computer Science. And basically, that class taught us about first order of natural deduction, I tossed a lot of prologue. My favorite thing that the professor kept on saying was that logic is the calculus of computer science. It definitely changed my definition of what I thought logic was. I have to take applied linear algebra. I was supposed to take that my second semester sophomore year. I haven't gotten around to it yet, so. So I have this elective, but like I said earlier, I took AP micro and macro, so I got credit for econ 212. Junior year, first semester, CSE 310. Now this is the computer science class. This is the class that every te technical interview is based on. This is also one of the classes that a lot of my peers had a lot of trouble with, and then a lot of them dropped out of computer science. There are two types of people who will do that. On one hand, there are people who, hey, they've spent two years of their life working towards computer science before they get even more deep into it, and they're starting to think, well, I don't know if I really like this programming thing. I don't know if I like computer science. They switch, and this is the class that kind of flips the switch of like, yeah, I don't like this, I wanna go. And then there are the people who are like, this is so hard, I'll never be able to learn this, I'm too dumb for it. And to those people, if you ever feel like that, just reassure yourself, everyone can learn this. It may take you two or three tries, that's fine. It's hard, it's supposed to be hard, but it's also very learnable. There are so many resources online, I'll list like right here, that could help you out with this. And just take solace in the fact that I passed it, so you could pass it. CSE 301, Computing Ethics. This could have been a super interesting class. Or instead of talking about like how software touches all of our lives, we just kind of talked about like old style ethical frameworks and we wrote an essay on one. It would have been really interesting to have like a debate about um, hospital observation systems or self-driving cars or internet of things, data collection, things like that. Other than like a few like five question quizzes, we never really talked about any of them, um, which is fine. It's a one credit class, which is very important, especially as software engineers don't necessarily have an association. You know, we don't need to be licensed to uh, be a software engineer, unlike almost every other engineering discipline. I think it's very important that us software engineers have a ethical framework that we work towards that we don't, you know, end up blowing up the world. CSE 360, Introduction to Software Engineering. So basically, if you haven't had an internship at this point, you'll learn a lot of the things that you would have learned at the internship, such as Git version control, probably the most valuable skill that any software engineer student could learn. A lot of uh, project management stuff, you learn about Agile, and I'm sure you I'm sure you've heard of Agile, now whether or not you know what Agile is is one thing, but this class would teach it. I had another elective that I had to do, and I did Laughing to Music. We watched a bunch of old-time like Italian operas and tried to pretend like they were funny. IEE 380, Probability and Statistics for Engineering Problem Solving. The, the class is exactly what the title is. I, uh, I failed it. I didn't pass this class, so I need to retake this class next to Second semester junior year. So this is a mixture of classes that I have taken and that I'm going to take. So CSE 340, Principles of Programming Languages. A very heavy requirement for our senior year because we have a two semester long capstone and this is a prerequisite for that. If introduction to software engineering was programming 101, this is programming 102, except a lot harder. Uh -huh. CSE 330, Operating Systems. This goes more in depth of computer architecture and how to deal with like virtual memory and put an output, storage management, very OS level stuff, which is incredibly useful. It's less about the electrical engineering side of things, which part of the TSC 230 class I talked about earlier, we had electrical engineers in the class. This is very much focused towards computer science majors. CSE 355, Introduction to Theoretical Computer Science. I have not taken this class yet. I'm taking it this semester. I do not know what I am in store for. Introduces formal language theory and auto 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 um, CSE 400 elective. So basically, you have to take a 400 level computer science elective. I don't know what I'm going to take yet. And then just to give you a little tease about what senior year would be like at ASU, you have the first semester of your capstone, and then you have two more 400 level electives. You have a two-hour elective, which I got credit for. I took an Excel class, which I actually do recommend everyone learns how to do Excel. 
Um, and then any upper division technical elective, that could be any of the engineering discipline electives, as long as you meet the prerequisites for it. The one that I'm planning on taking is a mobile development class for this semester. And then senior year, you finish up your capstone, you have six more credits of the 400 level electives, and then another upper division technical elective. This is a class about database management that I'm planning on taking then. So guys, there you have it. That has been my three years at ASU and my one year to come. I hope this provides some sort of insight or clarification of what a computer science degree actually looks like from a typical school.